In this video, I'm going to give you the complete step-by-step -step that'll help you become an epic teacher here in Korea. So, you decided that you want to teach in Korea. Well, I'm really excited for you. Teaching in Korea has been one of the most life-changing experiences in my life, and I'm so happy that I did it. I know most of you guys here are just learning about EPIC, or you want to learn more and you have a lot of questions about teaching in Korea. The first thing I'll say is just breathe. Applying to EPIC is actually pretty simple and straightforward. All you need is time. You need time to get all of your documents, time to get your TEFL certification if you haven't already, and just generally, you need to be patient. I would say that the entire process takes about five to six months from when you begin applying to when you arrive in Korea. So in this video, I'm going to walk you step by step how you can also apply to become an EPIC teacher here in Korea. So I'm going to go over five things in this video. First, I'm going to explain what the EPIC program is. Second, I'm going to go over the requirements for applying for EPIC. Third, I'm going to go over the application. Here, I'll cover some general grounds regarding the application, along with some tips that'll help you get accepted. Fourth, I'll go over when and how to apply, and I'll also give you a general timeline of what you can expect from when you begin applying to when you land in Korea. And fifth, I'll share some tips to help you apply successfully. Of course, you can feel free to jump to any one of these sections. I'll leave the timestamps below in the description box. So if you're ready, then let's get started. Number one, what is the EPIC program? So EPIC stands for English Program in Korea, and it's a program sponsored by the Korean Ministry of Government. So the purpose of this program is to teach English to Korean students and to help them improve their English speaking and writing skills in a world where English is used everywhere. Your job is to assist the main Korean teachers with their English classes, prepare teaching materials and lesson plans, and also run English summer and winter camps. You'll also run additional classes such as after-school English classes, teacher English classes, and other extracurricular activities that involve teaching English. You'll most likely work at an elementary school, but I've heard cases of people being placed in middle or high school. You can also be placed at an English training center, the Office of Education, an English Experience Center, or any other educational institute. On top of that, you could also work at two or three additional schools along with your main school. So the contract for EPIC is for one year, and you'll be asked by your main co-teacher if you want to renew it towards the end of the year. Sadly though, EPIC doesn't provide contracts for less than one year, so make sure to allot one full year if you're thinking about teaching with EPIC. You'll be working for 8 hours, usually from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. from Monday through Friday, and you're contracted to teach 22 hours per week. For the rest of the time when you're not teaching, you're expected to lesson plan for other classes that you may have in the week. So again, the program is basically run by the Korean government, so there's nothing shady about this job at all. You get paid on time. On top of that, you get free rent housing, medical insurance, a round-trip airfare, a pretty generous severance package, and other benefits as well. In terms of salary, you'll get paid anywhere from 1.8 to 2.7 million won per month, which is about $1,800 to $2,600. Of course, you'll get paid more depending on your teaching experience and degree, and your salary will increase each year if you decide to renew your contract. Last but not least, as an EPIC teacher, you'll get 26 paid vacation days as well as 11 sick days and all of Korean national holidays off. Whew. All right, so if you like what you heard, then let's look at some of the requirements when applying for EPIC. So number two, requirement for EPIC. So in order to be eligible to apply for EPIC, first, you need to be a citizen in one of these seven countries, the US, Canada, the UK, Ireland, South Africa, Australia, or New Zealand. 
According to EPIC's website though, Indian citizens are also eligible to apply as long as they meet all the other requirements and hold a teacher's license in English. Second, you must have a TEFL, TESOL, or CELTA certificate of 100 hours or more from an accredited program. Later in the video, I'll let you know what my top recommended TEFL programs are. You don't have to complete the certificate before you submit your application as EPIC will allow you to complete it before you arrive to Korea. However, you must obtain your certificate no later than 6 weeks before your expected arrival date in Korea. In other words, get it done as quickly as possible so it's one less thing to worry about. For the TEFL program, the in-class hours are not mandatory in order to be eligible for EPIC, but having at least 20 hours will help you get in easier. Some cities in Korea actually require that you have them in order for you to teach there. In Busan, which is a city that I'm teaching in, I was required to have at least 50 hours in order to teach here. So third is your degree. You need at least a bachelor's degree from an accredited university from one of those seven countries that was mentioned before. The cool part is, is that it doesn't have to be an English or a teaching degree, although if you do have one of those, you might not need a TEFL certificate. In addition, you might qualify for a higher pay. I'll put a link to EPIC's website down in the description box if you want to check it out. Number four, you need to have a squeaky clean criminal record. Every applicant will be required to submit a criminal background check just so the Korean government knows that you are a model citizen. Remember, being a teacher in Korea is considered a really prestigious position as children will look up to you as their teacher and role model. With that said, having any misdemeanors or felonies on your record may hinder you from getting accepted. Next, and this goes without saying, you need to be both mentally and physically healthy. In your application, you'll be required to fill out a self-medical check survey. You will also be required to complete and pass a physical checkup once you arrive in Korea. Normally, this checkup will be done during your orientation. Now, this is the final gate that you have to pass in order to teach in Korea. This medical test will include a tuberculosis check as well as a P-test to check to see if you took any recreational drugs or illegal narcotics. Now, I've heard stories about people who failed their health checkup in Korea and had to be sent back to their home countries. You do not want that to happen to you, so make sure that your health is squeaky clean upon arrival in Korea. Six, and this also goes without saying, you need to be good at English both speaking and writing. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to know how to write a novel or even be a native speaker, but you should be able to speak English like it's your first language. I know there's no strict criteria as to what American English should be, or what Canadian English should be, or what British English should be, but you should be able to speak English fluently. But hey, you know, if you're applying for a position as a native English teacher here in Korea, then I'm going to assume that you already speak English pretty well. Finally, you need to be under the age of 62 in order to apply for EPIC. 62 is the official retirement age in Korea, so it makes sense that they want their foreign teachers to be under that age as well. Okay, so I know that was a lot of information to digest, so if you made it this far, then congratulations. So now that you meet all of the requirements, let's take a closer look at the actual application. So EPIC's application has three parts, personal information, personal essay, and sample lesson plan. In the personal information section, you're going to fill out your general information, including your name, passport info, your contact, teaching experience, educational experience, and work history. Now for the personal essay, you're going to answer three different essay prompts that range from 250 to 300 words. These three prompts are, one, why do you want to teach English in Korea? Two, explain your teaching philosophy, and three, share your thoughts on encountering cultural differences. I know these questions might seem daunting, especially if you never taught before. Just take a breath because these questions are actually really simple to answer. What Epic is looking for is someone who is easy to work with, two, open-minded to teaching children, and three, curious about different cultures. I highly recommend applying through a recruiter 
If all of this seems overwhelming, I'll talk about why you should apply through a recruiter later down in this video. Finally, you will have to create a sample lesson plan using Epic's provided template as well as include any materials such as PowerPoint slides and worksheet that you will use in the lesson you make. If you've never taught before, don't worry, as your TEFL courses will help you create a lesson plan that you can use on your application as well. You can also find a bunch of resources and example lesson plans online if you need help getting started. So aside from the application, here are some other things you will need. First, you need two professional passport style photos that are 3 cm by 4 cm, as well as two recommendation letters. These letters can be from your boss, your previous employer, or anyone who has supervised you in the past. Ideally though, you want to pick someone who can talk about your qualities and why you might be the perfect fit as an EPIC teacher. Also, if you're from an English-speaking country where a majority don't speak English like in South Africa or in Quebec, then you need to submit proof that your schooling from the 7th grade all the way to university was conducted in English. Again, I'll put a link below so you can check it out. Now, once you pass your interview, you will need to submit hard copies of all of your documents along with a color copy of your passport and your Apostle Criminal Background Check and Apostle copy of your diploma. In addition, you have to submit your sealed university transcript and a copy of your TEFL, TESOL, or CELTA certificate. If you're from the UK or Australia, you will also need to send in your Apostle copy of your birth certificate. I'll put a link below so you can check it out. Okay, so that was the application itself. Now, let's check out how you can apply and what you can expect. So number four is the application process. So Epic has two intakes. One is in the spring and the other one is in the fall. These are the two time periods that Epic brings teachers during the year. Applicants who get accepted for the spring intake will begin working starting in late February, while those who get accepted for the fall intake will begin working in late August. Epic usually opens their application six months before the beginning of an intake. So the application for the spring intake will open in August, while the application for the fall intake will open in February. If you want to apply for a specific intake, just remember to apply at least six months before. I was accepted for the 2019 spring intake, which I started to apply around late August of 2018. We'll get into why applying earlier might be better later in the video. So these two intakes are related to the dates of the school semester in Korea. I personally recommend applying for the spring intake just because more positions are available during that intake, which means you get to meet more people at orientation and you can adjust easier to your new school versus in August, which is the start of the second semester, halfway through the current school year. Once you know which intake that you want to apply for, you need to decide whether you want to apply directly to Epic or through a recruiter. If you're confident and you know what you're doing, then applying directly can help you get the job faster since you will be communicating straight with an Epic staff versus if you apply with a recruiter, they will act as a middleman between you and Epic and you will be mostly communicating with them. Honestly, from personal experience, if you want a no-hassle, stress-free way of applying to Epic, then I highly, highly recommend applying through a recruiter. I'm a big advocate of recruiters because applying to Epic can be super overwhelming considering the amount of documents that you need to secure. Recruiters can help you stay organized and answer any questions that you might have. They also have years of experience helping people get accepted so you can trust that they know exactly what they're doing. Best of all, their service is completely free. You don't have to pay anything to use a recruiter. I've heard that applying directly might affect where you get placed since your application will be submitted faster, but I know a lot of people who got their first city preference by applying through a recruiter, so there's really no difference in how you decide to apply. But from my experience though, I highly recommend taking the easy path 
and applying through a recruiter. Now, if you're looking for a recruiter, then I highly recommend Korean Horizon. The guy who runs it, Alistair, literally cannot be more helpful. He helped me organize all of my documents and even critiqued my personal essays and gave me feedback on how to improve them. He even helped me prep for my interview with Epic and even got me placed in Busan, which was my first preference. I can't stress how super easy and convenient the application process was because of Korean Horizon. Again, if you want to apply to Epic, then I highly, highly recommend using a recruiter like Korean Horizon. So I've actually reached out to Alistair and asked if he was still in Korean Horizon and lo and behold, he's still Still there helping people get into epic i'll link his website down in the description box if you want to check it out so now that you know when and how to apply let's look at the application process itself first you will submit your initial application and documents digitally you can do this by submitting it to either epic or to your recruiter second after about a month or so you'll hear back from epic or your recruiter about setting up an interview the interview will most likely take place on skype so make sure that you have a working skype id third epic or your recruiter will notify you whether you pass your interview after about a week or two it's time to submit your hard copies of all of your documents to epic or your recruiter if you live in america then i highly recommend using dhl or any express mail service to send in your documents once your documents are submitted and received you'll get your province or city placement in South Korea via email. Congratulations, you finally did it. The hard part is finally over. Now, all you have to do is book your airplane tickets and get your visa. I'll link Epic's website in the description box just so you know what you need in order to apply for your visa. Basically, you need your contract and notice of employment, which will be sent to you directly by mail from either Epic or your recruiter. Once you have these documents, you need to take them along with your visa application and passport to your nearest Korean consulate. Don't worry too much about this step though, your recruiter or Epic will guide you through this process. And with that, you should be all set. So now here are some of my tips for when you are applying for Epic. So tip number one is make sure that all of your documents are correct. This tip alone cannot be overstated. Epic is serious about getting the right documents in, and if it finds that your name is misspelled in one of the documents, or the person writing your letter of recommendation forgot to use a proper letterhead, they will reject them, which means that it will affect your acceptance. When I was first applying, I realized that my university diploma had my old name on it instead of my new legal one. I could have asked them to mail it to me, but then since my school was only an hour drive away, I was able to pick it up on the same day. Now, if I didn't proofread my diploma, that could have seriously hurt my chances of getting into Epic. So make sure that all the T's are crossed and your I's are dotted when you apply. Your recruiter can help you catch some of the mistakes in your application, but the majority of that responsibility falls on you. Number two, speaking of recruiters, my next tip is to definitely, definitely apply with one. Like I said, if this is your first time applying, then things might get overwhelming considering the amount of documents and legal things you have to gather within a certain time frame. A recruiter will help you organize everything for you and they will act as a liaison between you and Epic. Best of all, their service is completely free, which is pretty incredible considering the amount of help that you will get with your application. So again, if you don't know where to start with the whole application, then I highly, highly recommend applying through a recruiter like Korean Horizon. Number three, get your application in as early as possible. Epic accepts people on a first come first serve basis, which means that there will be a higher chance that you will get the city of your choice if you apply early. Number four, try to get your TEFL as soon as possible. You don't need to finish your certificate before you apply, but it's definitely helpful as it's one less thing that you need to worry about. You can find a lot of places that offers TEFL courses. Most TEFL courses cost about an average of $1,000 and they take about a month to complete. I personally recommend Oxford seminars as they are one of the most reputable and well-known. Right now, they offer all classes on Zoom due to the pandemic so you don't have to worry about commuting to class. If you want to learn more about Oxford Seminar then I'll leave a link down in the description box below. And finally number five make sure that you do a lot of research online. Moving to Korea is a 
big step in your life. So when I first applied to Epic, I combed through Reddit and YouTube, trying to find out exactly what it is that I needed in order to apply successfully. There's also a strong online community out there that might have answered some of the questions that you have. So I know that there was a lot of information out here, but again, applying to Epic is really not that hard. It just takes a long time since you need to collect so many legal documents. But I think the effort is truly worth it. You know, I've been teaching in Korea for about two years now, and I've loved every moment of it. I never saw myself as a teacher, but I'm so glad that I took that chance and became one in Korea. So if you have any questions or thoughts, make sure to leave them down in the comment sections below, and I'll try to respond to every one of them. Alright, thanks for watching guys, and good luck with your application. I'll see you guys later. Bye!